Terry Stevens streamer today. This is called the ELB number two. I've mentioned in other videos she named a number of flies after people that she knew or people that requested her tie some flies for her and everything. This one's rather interesting. It was named for a Paul Leonard Bean. And there is a ELB number one as well. But one interesting note about this is Paul Leonard Bean had a nephew that actually was integral in starting what is known as the Carrie Stevens Day. Carrie Stevens Day is a main holiday or at least designated day to honor Carrie Stevens. It's August 16th every year and it was started in 1970. But it's rather interesting that he had a nephew that actually was integral in getting that off the ground. Handsome little fly, just kind of like a lot of her other streamers, same pieces and parts and how it's put together. I like the yellow dyed grizzly hack hackle wings on this one. And the head is also different. It's just red and gold. So that is the PLB number two. I'll get started tying. start the PLB number two with my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad R79 in a size four. It's a 10x long streamer hook according to Mustad. But this is essentially about the same size as a Partridge CS15 in a size six. But I find the Partridge CS15 to be a little bit longer and the wires just a little bit heavier but these R79s are good hooks as well. So I'm going to start off with attaching my thread. For, to start off with, I'm using a white UTC 140 denier. Now it is a tinsel body, so I could use a black, but actually the PLB number two does not have a black head in it, so it has a red and a gold head. But I'm going to go with this simply because. I can move, get it from one end of the hook shank a little bit quicker uh, from one end to another. Now, there is a tip on this. The tip is silver tinsel. I'm going to use a Danville size 12 Mylar silver and gold tinsel. I'm going to attach it right about here. I'm just maybe an eighth of an inch in front of the point of the hook. Attach this with the gold side up. Now I'll advance my thread back down to just past the point of the hook. If you want this a little shorter, I think it'd be fine. Even if you wanted the placement of this a little further forward, I think it would be fine. I haven't found any information exactly on the tips on these and where they should exactly be or the length of them and so on. So I think it's partially a matter of taste. Flip this over and I tied that in wrong. I tied that in with the silver side up. So you'll have to excuse me. I'm just going to unwind this real quick. I was thinking about the silver side up. And so then, unfortunately, I put the silver side there, even though I said I was going to tie it with the gold side up. But we'll get this corrected. So there's the gold side up. Now I can advance my thread down and back up. This is just putting a little bit of a base of thread underneath it. Now I can apply tip. I usually get about 
five or six wraps of the tinsel for the tip. A few wraps to bind that in, I can trim away the excess. As I mentioned, there is a tail on the PLB number two, and it is just red hackle fibers. So I'm going to use some of these red barbs from this is a whiting American rooster saddle. Strip away the fluff, isolate what you want for the tail, get those perpendicular to the rachis there so the tips are even, and then you can peel those off. If you want a little fuller, you could go with it. Thing is, you're going to have just a little bit of a bump back here. Can't get around it. These curlies from where that's peeled off the rachis, I trim these at a little bit of an angle like this to help um, minimize that bump a little bit. You want these maybe about anywhere from three eighths, half an inch past the bend. If you have, um, I don't know, some strong rooster or something that is a little bit longer, you certainly could go with that in terms of the, um, the hackle fibers here, and then they would be further up on the hook shank. Now I could do, and some of the videos recently that I did where we did a tinsel body, and I'm using that same Danville number 12, I could do um, a body all the way from the front down and back. I've done that on a number of them, but I'm going to do this one just a single layer. So I'm going to attach this again with the gold side up. I'm going to pull this so this is almost all the way down. Get a good probably 10, 11 inches of tinsel out because you don't want to run out. And I'm going to advance my thread forward, touching turns. And that kind of stretches that bump out just a little bit. It smooths it out just a little. I'm going to go ahead and flatten my thread here just so that. I can cover more of the hook with each turn. Get my thread up to about two eye lengths behind the eye of the hook. That's where we will anchor in the body. As I've done on others, I'm going to put some head cement along the hook shank under this thread. It's going to help kind of bind that tinsel down just a little bit, make it a little bit more durable. Thing you have to be careful about if you're going to do just an individual, excuse me, an individual layer of tinsel is you want to make certain that you're just overlapping a little bit or just nice and adjacent. You don't want to get any thread wraps out there. Sometimes this can be a little bit easier said than done. And the reason is you have to keep a consistent angle as you're wrapping that tinsel forward. Because if you don't, what you end up with is little bumps. I'm getting some of them already back here. These are transitions where it was wrapped at an angle, even if it's just, you know, a fraction, a thousandths of an inch off a little bit. It just doesn't go in the same, and you end up with these little bumps. Now, you can go back and unwrap those and try and put those in, you know, a little bit neater or just overlap those. I find sometimes pulling and not necessarily stretching, but applying the tinsel under a little bit of force will help that. At the same time, keep in mind if this is a fishing fly, this is not going to affect it in terms of its fishability. Generally, if I'm tying one of these for uh, to be framed as a gift or on display or something, I'm going to do two layers of tinsel. But again, as a fishing fly, you're, you're trying to tie this, I don't want to say fairly quick, but you don't necessarily want to spend a huge amount of time at the vise. Then 
just go ahead and do one and live with a few little bumps. So you can probably see on camera, I've got one right here and a couple right here. Some of that is the transition on this taper. Notice once I got up to about here, all of them went in fairly smooth and even. Again, I'm not going to concern myself with that because this is going to be a fishing fly and it will suffice. So now I'm going to tie in, and I should say I'm going to attach my thread for the head. The head, as I mentioned, is a red and gold. As far as gold thread goes, the only one that I have is this 12 aught euro thread. And this is a yellow, but it looks much more gold than it does yellow. The gold that I have, or I should say the yellows that I have, like the UTC 140, as you can see, is definitely more yellow. So I'm going to use this for the gold. And I'm going to attach that right now so that I can put in the belly, the throat, and the wing. I'm going to get my thread about two eye lengths behind the eye of the hook to tie in the belly. Belly on this is just white bucktail. Just like I've done in a number of other videos, I'll take maybe about half a pencil or so, cut that off the hide and clean it. You can stack this if you want, if you want it to have a cleaner, you know, flatter end to it. I generally don't because I like the tapered look better. I think it flows better. I think it looks better in the back. Don't make these bellies too thick. Once I get that cleaned up, I can take a look at those tips and then any of these that are real long, I can either peel those out and match those back in. Any that are short, I can pull out just a little bit. Any that are busted and crooked, I can take out or I can stretch those out just a little bit. Just wanting to get more or less all of them even here, but you'll have a nice bit of a taper to this in the water. I'm going to measure that same length as the tail, maybe a little bit shorter. Tie that right in on the underside. And I will trim away the excess. I'll go ahead and lash that down just a little bit. Now I'm going to put in my throat. The throat on the PLB number two is a blue hackle. Now, something I wanted to point out on a number of the different flies that I've tied, the blue feathers that I had um, were a much darker blue, much richer blue. I've got this schlop in here. This is a uh, silver doctor blue. The Wapsi Company, I know, they labels theirs. The richer blue, something like this right here, generally gets labeled a uh, peacock blue. The lighter blue here, which this is a white feather that's dyed blue, not not that that matters. You could certainly have a darker color, but this is a called a silver doctor. I don't know that all the companies do that, but if you're wanting to get some that are a lighter color in terms of the blue that you're going to tie in, then you might look to see if they have something called silver doctor blue. And I'll start to tie that throat in. I get one bit of that right underneath and then another clump 
on both sides of the hook shank, same length. One thing I do want to note is, I think in the last few videos I did, the heads on these were getting a little bit long because I was using a much thicker thread for it and it just kind of naturally occurred. So with this thinner thread now, I'm trying to keep the heads a little bit smaller, more compact up towards the eye of the hook. Now, this does not have a underwing. Usually, or I should say a lot of her patterns will have an underwing of some peacock curl. This one does not. So we go right into the wing at this step. The wing is four grizzly hackles dyed yellow. And these particular ones are from a whiting neck and it's called a freshwater neck. It's a little bit different, a different shape than like the American hens. It's, it's kind of has your more traditional. Uh, rooster saddle ha hackle shape in terms of being wide down here and then tapering down fairly quick. But there's two on each side, and this is a grizzly that's dyed yellow. And I will match those up. I want to make certain I'm getting the tips nice and even. And I'll trim away the excess of those rachis, and I'll tie these in one at a time. Still trying to make certain that I'm keeping right up near the eye of the hook so I have a smaller head on that. And I'll get the other one matching up the tail there. I'll get this one right up here. And again, I'm not tying these in on top. If you can see this, I have. The stem right here is kind of up in this upper uh, quadrant right here. It's not right on top, and this stems here just over on the other, so that they they don't sit right up on top, and they'll actually ride down the sides of the fly a little bit more. With those in place, and I'll secure those, and I'll smooth off the head. As I mentioned, the head on the PLB number two is red and gold. It is red followed by gold, meaning that it is red in the rear portion of the head. So that's part of the reason I started and was using this gold or yellow thread now, because the red is a darker color and it will mask over that gold. I'll whip finish the yellow. You could say the gold. It actually kind of turned out nice. This is a uh, this yellow matched up with the the hackles pretty well, so it turned out pretty nice. Now I will attach my red. I'm using a Danville six aught in red for the back portion. I think this is a little bit brighter color than the uni red. Uni red tends to be just a little bit darker. And this one is just the back half is red. So we want to be a little bit careful in getting too many red wraps in here.
So all we want to do is just cover up the back half here. My side looks good, but this side I have some thread wraps right here at the base of the head that I gotta get. cement on there. I'll come back with some clear lacquer in just a moment. Seal that up real well, give it just a little bit of sheen, but it makes it more durable. And that will complete the PLB number two. There is a PLB number one, which I will probably be doing in the not too distant future. Some little fly. I like the grizzly hackle. Kind of surprised a lot of her her uh, flies don't have more grizzly hackles in them. But it might be fun to experiment with that for a little bit. But there you have it. That is the PLB number two by Carrie Stevens. Thanks for watching today. Thank you for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned a new pattern, at least a tip or trick here and there. If you'd like to help Dress Irons, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things for the video. You can also head out to DressedIrons.com where you can buy flies, tools, stickers, and merch. Or you can join a growing community over on Locals at the Dressed Irons Fly Tying Guild. You can also donate to Dressed Irons if you want through the link at the bottom of the description. I thank everybody for their ongoing support as it really does help the creation of these videos. But what's important is to remember, only fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Thank you.